I'm going to start out with a t-shirt that is your size. Make sure that it's smooth and flat. Want to make sure that it is the proper size, especially around the armholes. Take your ruler and measure where you want your V to stop from your neckline. And go ahead and mark that line. Next, you're going to mark a line from the point that you just marked all the way up to your shoulder point. I want my straps to be wide, so if you'd like yours to be a bit more narrow, then you can adjust that there. And go ahead and do that for both sides. You'll start to see your V take shape for your neckline. If you'd like to make any adjustments to make it deeper or more shallow, then you can do that now. Next up, you're going to mark from your neckline again down to your waist and make a dot there. And go ahead and straighten that line all the way across and that's going to be your cutting line. Using your fabric scissors, go ahead and cut off the bottom of your t-shirt. Next, go ahead and cut out your V. Now go ahead and cut off your sleeves and cut very close to the stitching line. Again, if you would like to have more narrow straps, then you can do so, but make sure to keep in line with the original armhole because you don't want it to get too big. So now you want to take these pieces and separate them into two. Just simply cut open at the shoulders and at the sides. You can separate them because they're identical and you're only going to be keeping one. Fold it in the middle, making sure that everything's even and aligned. And this is your pattern piece for your bodice and your lining. Mark your fabric, cut four on fold and label where your fold is at the center front. And that's it for your bodice pattern piece. So I've cut out four of my bodice pattern pieces on the fold like we've just marked and I've readjusted my fabric. We're going to cut out the back skirt piece first. So take your bodice pattern piece and with it folded in the middle and measure the bottom. Whatever that number is, add an inch and a half to that and that's what's going to be your waist measurement for your back skirt piece, which will be cut on the fold. Using a straight edge ruler, go ahead and mark that number out. And measure your length. And make a mark. So now that you've got your waistline and your hemline drawn out, you're going to take a yardstick and connect those two lines. And go ahead and cut out your back pattern piece. I'm not going to tell you what a pain it was to try to line up two layers of striped fabric. So if you're using a solid color, then go ahead and lay out your fabric with the fold facing you and selvage edges away from you. But if you're using stripes and you'd like to match it up just like I wanted to do, then go ahead and just lay out your fabric one layer just like this. So let's go ahead and cut out two of your front pattern pieces. You want to measure out your waist just like you did the back pattern piece, the length, and the hem. And go ahead and connect those two lines just like we did before. To make that dramatic high split, you want to measure down 10 inches and measure in 6 inches. 
Then you're going to connect those lines with a soft curve. And that's your new cutting line. Now 10 inches from the top of your waist is very high. It's a very dramatic split. If you would like a little more coverage, then just measure the top of your waist down to where you want the top of your split to start. It's all up to you. The final look will be a faux wrap of sorts, but it will show a lot of legs. So go ahead and measure and make your marking accordingly. When you're satisfied with that, go ahead and cut out your pieces. If you're working with stripes like I am, just lay that piece that you just cut out on top of your second layer of fabric, match your stripes, and cut around it. Okay, about midway through, go ahead and snip a notch into your fabric at the top of your front panel pieces. For your belt, readjust your fabric fold facing you selvage edges to the other side, right sides together, and cut out two four inch strips all the way across. Now we're all done cutting. You should have your two fabric belt pieces, your front skirt panels, your back skirt panel, and four pieces for your bodice. Let's start sewing. Match up your bodice, fabric, and lining pieces, and you wanna sew them right sides together at the shoulder seams and press. Spread out your fabric and lining pieces you're going to sew all around the neckline so you can pin there and make sure that you match at the shoulder seams. You should have your v-neck sewn all the way around and pressed. And now I'm going to show you how to fully line a bodice top without a zipper opening. It's really easy. Fold your fabric right sides out and lay it flat. Roll up one side of your fabric and then you're going to flip over the other side, pick up the bulk and bring the bottom side. So now you're going to have two flaps with right sides facing and you're going to pin at the shoulder seam. You should only be pinning two layers of fabric while the other two layers of fabric are rolled up in the middle of this fabric roll. Pin through the armhole, making sure to keep that shoulder seam lined up and stitch only at the armhole. Do not stitch the side seams. My armhole is all sewn up and now I'm just going to reach through and pull my bodice right sides out. Now my armhole is all sewn up and we're just going to repeat the same thing. We're going to roll the finished side, flip over, pull under, match the shoulder seam, pin through the armhole, and sew the armhole only. When you're done, reach through and pull everything right sides out. Give everything a good press to make sure it lays nice and flat. To close up your side seams, go ahead and lay your bodice as you would wear it. Open out your top piece or your fashion fabric. Match the seams and pin. You're going to be sewing one straight line. Do that on both sides of your bodice. That was easy. Let's move on to the belt. Grab your belt pieces and right sides together, you want to sew one end of the belt pieces together and press open the seam. After you've sewn that middle seam, go ahead and fold it in half, right sides together, and you're going to pin all the way down the length and starting at one end, sew across the top, all the way down, and you want to stop sewing about a couple of inches away from the center seam. 
you want to leave that gap open there so you can turn the belt inside out. Once you've got both ends sewn with the gaps in the middle, go ahead and turn your belt right sides out on both sides. To close up the gap in your belt, you can either slip stitch, sew it by hand for a really clean finish, but make sure to fold in your seam allowances, or you can sew close to the edge with your sewing machine. Moving on to your front skirt pattern pieces. You want to make sure your notches are at the top and your curved hems are facing each other. Your pattern pieces should be right sides up. On the curved hem, go ahead and turn it under about half an inch and pin. You're going to do this for both pieces. Overlap one piece matching the notch to the edge of the pinned hem that you just folded under. And you're going to pin. Baste across the top to hold the pieces together. Now that you have one complete front skirt piece and one back skirt piece, just line them up right sides together and sew at the side seams. To wrap up your skirt, go ahead and fold under twice, about a half an inch to get your hem ready for your skirt. You're going to do this all the way down one panel piece around the bottom and back up. Once you've pressed it, go ahead and sew it. Now your dress is going to start coming together. Grab your bodice and with your skirt right side out, you're going to wrap your bodice around your skirt right sides facing, pin at the side seams through both layers. You're going to pin through your fashion fabric and your lining. Once you've got the side seams matched, pin at the center front, center back, and stitch around one inch. This will create the casing for your elastic. Okay, you've sewn your bodice together to your skirt with one inch seam allowance and you're going to lift up the top two layers of seam allowance and you're going to trim that last layer of seam allowance. I know I've already trimmed mine. You're just going to take some bulk out. After that's trimmed, press your seam allowances down towards the skirt flat. Sew your seam allowances down on the skirt because that'll create the casing for your elastic. So you're going to sew um, close to the edge, but making sure to leave um, about an inch and a half to two inch gap so you can get your elastic in and out. I've secured my casing and I've left my opening here. I have my elastic, which I've measured around my waist about what's comfortable for me. And I've secured a safety pin at the end. You can also use a bodkin. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this through. And I'm going to thread this through, making sure not to lose the end of my elastic. I usually just kind of hold on to it um, as I'm pulling through. And then once I've pulled through my elastic, both ends are going to be sticking up. I'm going to take my safety pin out and then I'm going to run a zigzag stitch a few times over here just to secure it. Okay, I've got my elastic in. I have zigzag stitched it closed. And I'm just going to spread everything out evenly. And we've got this opening that we just need to secure. And I'm just going to very carefully go ahead and close it up. And voila, you're all done.